a welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from a uh, fairly chilly workshop at Black Dragon Forge. I'm Nils van Bach, and uh, this is the third episode involving that little stiletto. Yeah? Which one? Well, the one we drew up in episode one. So if you're new to uh, this little bowl, I did not link the details in the description below, but I will be doing it. It's painful. So, as you expect, yeah, we're, we're, we're live for like freaking 30 odd seconds is already an issue. Um, so, there we go. We've got a couple of guys popping in already. Sean is going to drive the system for us. Um, I see that Marcel is already in there. Click, dude, click, click, click. There we go. How's it going? Next one. Quinton. How's it going, Yos? Uh, Coffee and zigs, okay, on the way. I see Mr. Jack Connor is in the house. Mr. Maya Michel Zwan, Dion Fasahi. Good morning, gentlemen. Yes, this is fairly early. Oh crap, my mic is all the way over there, but luckily I I, I, I scream at people. Yeah. Um, so hopefully the sound will be a tad better now if I don't break off the stand. All right. So Let's get this thing done, yeah? So what I've done is I've already chucked up uh, the piece of bronze that was the leftover from the handle section that we did, um, and I already just cleaned it off. Um, I didn't knock my hand on the chuck this morning, so I moved it out a tad further, yeah? Uh, the outside's amateur at this point in time, and I've lost my vernier. Robert, hello, good. Thank you, Sean. Do you mind just getting my vernier for me? Uh, please, I think it's on my desk. Um, I believe that was 16 and a half millimeters. I need to get down to 16 uh, for this. I've got the old dodgy cutter set up. Let's just get that in picture. Yeah. So there's my dodgy cutter is set up. Uh, but before I start cutting, I need to. Uh... Oh, it was lying behind me. Thanks, Sean. So let's just quickly measure that. Yeah. So that is 16. 16.8 yeah, 16.8 alright so I need to get that down to 16 but we'll be using the uh, files to do that Justin how's it you've got slopes uh, Justin yes yes I do buddy <laughs> I do uh, I just don't know where they are that is dodgies but yes I do have um, alright so before further ado, I think what we need to do is uh, I'm just going to measure from the center of the quillen. Quillen, also known as a cross guard, from the center mark out. Let's see the amount of material. So I'm just going to go a couple of mil over. Uh, so I require about 40 mil, so 80 mil in total. Working area in this little baby. So let's just mark up 80. Yeah. Okay, so the only thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I've cut enough material uh, free, yeah? So then we're going to chuck it up to a 40, which we know is halfway up, yeah? And we're just going to do an arbitrary mark halfway down the line. Thanks, brother. That's appreciated, man. Uh, now, I know my quillen block is 20 mil. Would you mind just checking why the hell this thing? Okay, all right, all right that's good. It is vibrating something stupid today. And I just slapped Sean. Because it was, once again, his arm on the lathe trying to uh, uh, dampen the noise. Yeah, It's not something that we do. Don't stick your dangly bits into machines. Right, so I know my quillen block needs to be 20 more wide. So I know my quillen block needs to be 20 more wide. So I am uh, setting my vernier to 10. And I never started the recording on this thing. Sorry. So aside from broadcasting to both uh, uh, in uh, Facebook and YouTube, um, I also record this if, if something happens. And I record it locally. So if something happens uh, uh, to the broadcast or whatever, I can upload after the fact. Yeah. Which is something I didn't do in episode two. All right. So from that center line. I'm doing an arbitrary little measurement, yeah? Okay, I'm actually going to be working from that line that I've just done. 
So next to that line, I need to cut in. And I actually need my square cutter for this, but uh, we'll be using a little dodgy round. I just want to make a little mark. Maybe I should just flip over to the square. Let's do that. Let's do that quickly. I should actually zoom this one out ever so slightly so you can actually see. Oh, crap. There we go. That's better. So, yeah, I do have these quick change whatnots, but I need more of them, man. And uh, unfortunately, this kit that I bought. I can't just go and buy extra just this portion of it. I need to buy a new complete kit. So that's it. When are you going to spend money on tooling? Yeah. Um, just think about it. Don't just buy the first piece that you, you get. That's the problem. This is a fairly nice set, but uh, like I said, I can't expand it. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Okay. So now I can do a uh, 20 measurement. So all my measurements are in millimeters if you haven't figured that out yet. So that's a 20. And I'm just cutting in an arbitrary depth here. Uh, so we're cutting a uh, to my dial, let's call it a 4.6, which absolutely means nothing for you guys. I'm just cutting a depth in there. See how deep that one is. We're going to go up to a 4.6. There we go. All right. So the next step would be to figure out what the thickest part. If I can amend, uh, what's his name? Learn how to use a milling machine. Learn how to use a milling machine. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I'm busy on a fucking lathe. And make your own. Make my own what? Oh, little connector thingies. That, there. Yeah, no, dude. Um, I pay some other dude in China to make it. Yeah, it's as easy as that. I make knives. And that's it. That's a good mate of mine, Mr. Stuart Smith. That, that's his argument. Sometimes that really pisses me off. Uh, but... <laughs> But now I use the same thing. Jack, I hear what you're saying, buddy. But uh, no, I, I want to buy stuff that's already precision. If I wanted to become a precision engineer, I would have. Uh, okay, so 10 mil is the widest part on this, yeah? Um, so I know that the, well, that, that's the base of what I need to turn down to. So these on the sides, I need to turn down to the, the thickest part which is then that um, uh, 10 mil, yeah? So with my dodgy turning, I'm actually going to be doing it at 11 mil, yeah? Because I want to always go thinner, but I can't put metal back. So I just want to open up that slot ever so slightly broader. Yeah. And the problem with this little square one of mine is that it'll cut from one side. It doesn't want to cut back. Yeah, so I need to... Uh, I can only cut from one side. And taking uh, this thing and, and going to... I don't know... resharpen it. It's just going to take time that I don't want to spend at the moment. So maybe I should just cut a small section first. Yeah. So keeping my vernier in the slot I'm cutting. There we go. So that's 10, well, 11 mil, all right? So now I know where I need to hit. Oh. Can 
You can see it chattering, man. So let me just fasten this tail sock. That's better, but that's what happens when you cut with a dodgy cutter. That's actually making it vibrate way too much, man. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find that 11 mole there. There we go. And that is on a 22. So let me just carry that over to the other side. I don't want to cut close to that final size. So I'd much rather use the uh, the dodgy little round cutter that I made. Because that doesn't cause as much uh, chatter, yeah? So why am I not investing in proper tooling for uh, the lathe is I am planning on upgrading the lathe. Well, upgrading the lathe. So in next week, I am going to have a look at a brand new lathe. Well, a brand new, a second-hand lathe. And no, I'm not one of those guys that are interested in the old Colchester lathe or a blah, blah, blah. I want a new fucking thing with a speed control. Yeah, I've had enough of old shit. Guy saying that a 60 year old lathe is more precise than a brand new engineered uh, digital lathe. Yeah, no. It all depends on the brand, man. So I hear what you're saying, but uh, no. I've had the misfortune to uh, work on, a, on an old lathe that was. Uh, beautifully restored but the person that restored it didn't know what the fuck they were doing so there's so much play on this thing i don't know but anyway so that was my well not rant uh, i do get it when guys are saying buy old crap if you can buy old crap where it was properly looked after then yeah by all means man and when i say old crap i do say it with the biggest respect well, i've just had it man so this one of mine, it, it works fairly cool. All right, uh, Sean, you, you can't have private conversations. Do you read the comments or just take the comment off? Jack, <laughs> Jack Yeah, what does Jack say? I'm enjoying sitting here watching other people work. But I'm... Yeah, yeah that, that, that's cool. Take it off. Jack, buddy, so you either work or you don't work, yeah? This is the beauty about YouTube and Facebook. You can do it whenever you want. You can come back and, and watch it again. But uh, everything that I'm doing here, Mr. Jack Conan, is uh, much better at the shit that I am. Yeah. Also, a member of the South African make, uh, Knife Makers Guild and a good mate. Yeah. So I do appreciate you spending time with us, buddy. Uh, but long story short, I've got that cut down to run about the size I need. Uh, let me just double check this. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to that I mentioned there which we said was a 22. I want to cut that 22 all the way through, but now I'm going to take my time to get a semi-decent cut. And there's no auto feed. That dodgy feeding you see there is me. Yeah. And the problem with this is I really don't have the patience for turning stuff. I really honestly don't, because I just want to power through, man, which is uh, my biggest flaw. I really don't take the time. So guys will normally come up and ask you, how long does it take you to make this? Well, whatever you're busy with. It'll take as long as it takes. That That's the answer. Yeah, doesn't matter what you do, it'll take as long as it takes. Okay, so now that is both the same diameter. And we actually have uh, 
a visitor in the shop today. Ooh, that chattering is driving me nuts, man. You're almost there. Just keep in mind, I'm turning down to the thickness of the funnels on the ends, the little acorns. The radius of this acorn shell, which is 10 millimeters in uh, diameter. And that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Okay, so that's done. Now, I believe I can swap that again. Let me just make 100% sure on that. Design. Yeah, I can swap. We're going to be swapping this little cutter uh, quite a few times today. But I believe that I'm done with the initial cut. Welcome, Trevor Foster from Melbourne. Trevor, how's it going, buddy? Any questions so far? Or are you guys just giving me lip? Mm, mostly lip. Mostly lip, as we would expect. As we'd expect. Why did I do, decide to do it so early in the morning? No one asking me? Well, it's because everyone... Is, I've been in the shops since 6 okay, this morning. Mic is in the way of your... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been in the shops since 6 in the morning. 6 o'clock. Um, and uh, I wanted to do it then, but I'm working on the lathe at 6 in the morning. That's not my idea of uh, how you should be starting your day. Yeah? yeah. Definitely not. Coffee. Yeah, that's how you should be. Okay, so we're now setting up uh, to cut the first two grooves. So if we get this thing back in, yeah. So to cut, to cut, to cut that little groove there and that little groove there. As you can see, there's a 10 millimeter uh, distance between them. Yeah. So between the centers. On. So let's do this. I need my little lighty light so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Really want to touch it to the side while cleaning this in. And I'm just making a little cut there. I'm not too concerned about the depth. But I definitely do not want to cut too deeply. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is where my dodgy cutter is uh, going to probably come back and bite me in the ass. Yeah, man, but I'm not competing in the 48-hour, uh, uh, what's it, Bowie build you guys have got going? Yeah, so uh, that's your own stupidity, buddy. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> you made that choice, dude. Uh, and then one thing I just realized is that I, 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 I pretty much screwed up. Um, there should be a spacer, a separator spacer from the quillen block to there. But that spacer is... So let's do this. Take that off completely. So that spacer block sits right there, which is two millimeters. As you can see, I've actually just did that measurement so if i set this to two mil uh, it's just a slight little offset yeah uh so that's a two mil but i just want to get the radius there i do believe that i've got that radius set at five millimeters if i'm not mistaken five millimeters it is yeah so i am going to cut down up to a five mil. I just want to see. So I'm going to set this on six because we all know my dodgy measurements. Yeah. And I just want to see whether I've screwed up. No, there's plenty of space. So even with that round nib, I can come in uh, with my square. Yeah, that's good. All right. So I can step it over two mil, but I need to move back to the previous cutter. <laughs> do I really? Do I really? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, damn. Hold up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that measurement there, which was my initial three mil. I'm going to step it over. 
I don't know if I should do this. Are we just going to eyeball it? Am I? Or is it going to come back and bite me in the ass? Just because I was too lazy to change the tool. It is going to come back and bite me in the ass. I know this. Sorry, this is my OCD. Kicking in. Yeah, it is. It is going to come back and bite me in the ass. So, proper planning prevents piss performance. It's supposed to be poor performance, yeah. Just because I'm lazy. So what does it teach you, kids? Don't be funking lazy. Okay, here's your first question. Yeah, shoot. Matt Irwin, when the blade is forged, what steel will you use? Uh, the blade is already forged. Um, I have got a piece of uh, twist Damascus that I made about, holy crap, about three months ago. Um, that's been sitting around for a project. So I will not be making the steel. It's already been turned down into a round bar, and it's already been annealed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, my intent is not to show you how to make your own steel. Yeah, um, There's a lot of videos, a lot of good, good videos out there. Um, the whole idea here is the process I use to make the dagger, uh, the individual little steps. Um, and uh, if, you start with, if I started with a plain carbon steel, no one would care. Yeah. So uh, I do Damascus, and I always use a twist pattern because all the other patterns just kind of get lost when you get to that thin little triangle blade. So yes, um, I intend to sell this thing. I only make sure that I can sell. So uh, I use Damascus. Done. That's it. Simple twist pattern. The bolder you can get it, and the finer you can twist it. So in other words, large or a, a high layer count, or not a high layer count, a low layer count. So if you can do like 12 layers, yeah? And then twist it really, really fine. You'll get a nice little pattern. Keep in mind, we're now talking millimeters, yeah? Uh, on the triangle of the blade, where it turns to a triangle there. Yeah, uh, let me get that light out way completely. So when this, where the blade actually turns into a triangle, down there. Yeah, so up here and down there is where you, if you've got a, I don't know, a weird pattern, for instance, like a, I don't know, whatever. Um, as soon as you get into the details down here, uh, that pattern just completely gets lost. Completely. And it doesn't help you having a funky pattern on this side and then nothing there. And 90% of the patterns you need to realize um, is actually made, for instance, raindrop. You will never be able to use raindrop on a, on a dagger. Don't. Um, not, not on a stiletto, let me say that. Uh, because stilettos are round and then going into triangles. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's square ones as well. But on uh, this design that I have here, a twist pattern will work phenomenal. Um, and it's pretty much the only pattern that will work tomorrow. phenomenal. Now, you can sub-pattern and then twist. What have you got on there? Uh, there's Sean here. P -p 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 Prior planning prevents this performance. There's a um, mess. A mech thing. A mech thing? A mech. Mechanical no. no, that's a, a project management fucking old. It's one of those buzz phrases you use in corporates, yeah? PPP. <laughs> Get jitters. Uh, anyway. I can't pronounce that long word. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, all right. So, where was I before I started my rant? All right. I Change that, but now I can't remember whether I actually tightened this properly. So uh, we'll do that. Yeah. Don't bring my little light in. And now I can go and cut my little shoulder. All right, and I'm just going to open up a bit more space here. I might just change that little shoulder design. A little offset. I don't know. I don't know because I really... It, it, nah, I don't know why I did that. I've never done that on a, on a little stiletto dagger. I don't know why I decided to do a little offset there. Because I know for a fact that's going to come back and bite me in the ass. Okay, so... If I've got my calculations correct, I need a five mil, well, a three mil, two mil offset, and then my dig in uh, for that first hollow. 
So, uh, let's set this to two mil. Yeah, and I can mark two mil on both sides. I can't get in there with my burning. See, this is now where that little issue is going to come and it's going to come back and bite me in the ass so many times because I'm now doing something that my tooling is not set up for. Yeah. It's like going on to forge and fire and then trying something that you've fucking never done before. So we guesstimate that you can see that thing chattering. So why am I then working so far off the, the uh, chuck if it chatters? Uh, because I don't want to stick my hand to the chuck, yeah? I've been stuck for that thing so many times. that I feel that I know it intimately. Alrighty. So I've got that and I've got that. So uh, let's just take this cut out of the way because I do want to come in here with a file and start back moving. Now with the file, I can manipulate, I can cut left, I can cut right, um, as you see my pressure was to the right there, I'm now going to bring it in to the left, just to get as close to that little mark as I can. I just want to establish where that collar is going to sit, and I don't want to even cut it to the final depth, and doing one side is always easy, matching the left and right is where it becomes an issue. So on the handle, there was nothing really symmetrical. But on the pullet, you will see a tenth of a millimeter difference in symmetry just with the naked eye. Now we want to avoid that as far as possible, yeah? Now I can immediately see that that shoulder on the left here is slightly smaller. So I'm going to take just a small little cut. Let's clean that up. And I really can't tell. My light is really bad man so i can't tell so the biggest thing i have here i can do is measure from that side to that side sorry all i want is a line sitting there so i can just guesstimate the size and I can see, you can actually, you can clearly see if I do this just there and there, you can clearly see how this side is smaller than that side, yeah? Can you see that? It's a half a, a hair, but we'll just bring that half a hair in. Better. That is a lot better. Uh, I'm just quickly looking for a file, not one with a safe edge, specifically a flat or a triangular. Where's my triangular blade? Where is that triangular file? At? There we go. So all I want to do is I've got a suspicion, well not a suspicion, suspicion I know for a fact that the right side of my cutter, therefore this left side, is going to leave me with a bow. Yeah. So I 
this won't do that to flatten that cutter. So that's to make sure that I'm not making that spacer actually wider than uh, what I need it. Oh, that looks a lot better. Yeah, now it looks like the front might actually... No, 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 no we're good. Okay, so <coughs> what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to see that uh, a bit more. Just so I get a nice little defined shoulder from that transition. Now, keep in mind that transition... And what you now can do is, if I leave it at that size, which is, I don't know what size it is, you can now take that transition. On the drawing, the transition is round. Yeah. So on the drawing, the transition, oh, let me just get out of the from the, the mic. So in drawing, the, that little transition that we're now cutting is round. But you can go and hexagon it, you can square it, you can, you can do whatever. So if you want to square it, for instance, you need to just do a bit of math and realize that uh, you can't just leave it at, at four mil, for instance. If I'm then going to square it up, I'm going to sit with a two, two and a half mil center, which might be a bit weak. Yeah, so you want to leave it at a at a six mil, for instance, if you want to get to a four mil square. Yeah, that's on the round. You leave it on a six mil round to get it to a four mil square. So there's a bit of math involved, but nothing that will make your head sizzle. Yeah, okay, so getting back to this. Where are we at now? Uh, am I going to be measuring? I'm going to be measuring the, the second part or the second cut on both sides, and we're going to do that. But for that, I need to twist this thing and flop this thing around again. So like I said, invest, invest in a tooling setup that uh, you know is expandable. Don't just buy one kit and thinking, hey, I'm, I'm only buying this because I actually have the money to buy this. I'd rather save up and buy the real thing, yeah? Or a system or a setup. I'm not talking brands. I don't care whether it comes from China or fucking the US or, or Germany or I don't care. As long as the system is expandable and I can get the parts, yeah? There's a lot of guys that are so hang up on brands that uh, you kind of miss the point, man. But anyway, so long story short. Uh, we are measuring again. I know that from that center to uh, the other center of that plunge it needs to be 10 mil. So I'm setting up on that 10 mil and I'm not just, just, just going to eyeball it without getting smacked. Yeah, so all I want to do is eyeball the first one. Come in on that cut. And we'll move that cut to the right of that line. So I know for a fact that that is actually going to be a bit broader than on my sketch, which is something I wouldn't have an issue with. Yeah? I actually won't have an issue with that at all. So let me just quickly quickly just make sure I can transfer that size. Right, so I am now going to be measuring. See, the problem is that I can't get in there with my vernier. Yeah. So I eyeball it from the side to the side. Yeah. And I'm on just over eight millimeters. So I'm just going to lock that up. Eyeball it from the side to the side there. Okay. So I'm eyeballing from that side there to there. Okay. Another way of taking that measurement would be, which is probably more precise, and that's what we're after is from there to there. That will work even better. Yeah. On there too. See, I'm not bad off. So guesstimation and the actual real thing 
Damn, man. That's fucking spot on. So, yeah. Move that over. Start to the left of the line. Do the cut. Just an artery cut. Nice. So now that we've got that, so what we have so far, if we bring this guy in here, what we have so far is we've cut, we've cut that shoulder, we've got that, and we've got those two cut, yeah? So now I need to decide the thickness or the diameter there, which I've already done and said, I would really like that to sit at a six mil, yeah? Okay, so now what we can do is hoo -hoo, grab That's a cup of coffee. Young. That's a young's coffee. Rian, thanks, brother. Ah, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. Oh, that is filter coffee. Uh, that's, from, that's good stuff. From, from a beginning, beginner vegan knife maker, one of the point of, of you. <laughs> and here you go. The next one. Which would you rather have? A surface grinder attachment or bench mill? Okay, so I am a activist for standalone machines. Yeah, um, I would prefer not telling anyone to go buy an attachment for a machine or an upgrade. Like, for instance, a surface grinding attachment is just a... Oh, I don't know. Uh, take off the comment, please. Sean. Um, it is... The, the surface grinding attachments, let me put it this way. The surface grinding attachments for belt grinders that I have seen, in one word, sucks. This is easy as that, yeah? The, the reason a surface grinding exists is to be able to take a thousandth of a millimeter off a piece of steel, not just a thousandth of an inch, yeah? Um, so if you want to get to that level of precision, for instance, folder makers, yeah, you, get, you need a surface grinder. Um, so now you need to decide why are you looking at a surface grinder for a belt grinder? Is it because you are lazy um, and you don't have a disc sander in your shop? Um, you see it because it is, you see another maker has it and you're now trying to figure out why he uses it. Um, my dad is saying that you can't miss a tool if you've never had the tool. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't use my surface. I've got a standalone surface grinder. Yeah, that was converted to a belt grinder setup, so I can put my belts on there. Um, uh, and I use that to clean up Damascus. Um, and you'll see later on in this project where I actually use it to, uh, to, for instance, clean up that. So take it from around and actually set up the flats on this. Yeah, and that with a one-inch belt on that little surface grinder. That's Freaking quick, man. It's minutes. It is really, really minutes. So that's why I use that, that surface grinder for. Yeah. But I also I bought that machine because I came across it as a deal. Yeah. I was chatting to a mate of mine at a nice show, uh, Mr. Liban van Assant, another guild member. And he was saying that he just bought himself a new new uh, um, surface grinder. And I've been using his surface grinder. So every time I needed to use a surface grinder, I was going to his shop and using it. Um, and then I asked him, so what are you going to do with the old one? And he says he's going to sell it. I just had like two really good days at the show, right? Um, so I told him, how much you want for it? And he puts out a, a, a price. So I take my phone, go onto internet banking, and I've, we're good mates, right? Um, and I've had, I have his, his banking, and I just put the money over. So saying, well, thank you very much. I'll pick it up on Monday. And that was before he, <laughs> the machine wasn't for sale. I asked for a price. He gave me a price, and I just paid him. Done. Because I knew it was a steal, yeah? Um, and we were a couple of mates, and I was saying, look, dude, you can always give me my money back, right? Uh, but is it a deal? And he shook my hand, it was done. I went and picked it up in the money. Uh, but then that said, that thing stood in the corner of my shop for close to six months before I used it the first time. And I really, it is, the surface grinder in my shop is the least used machine ever. That's for me. Yeah, I see other guys use it on every single project. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know. But so hopefully that answers your question, man. Uh, I am a big activist of standalone. Yeah. Um, 
If I've got four or five wheels on a grinder that I need to use to make one single project, and I'm going to be using all five of those during a production run, where, say, for instance, a mini production run, where I need to do three or five or 10 or 20 of that specific knife, I own nine grinders for that reason. I hate changing fucking tools. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. There's so much time wasting. So I will set up five grinders in a row and create a production environment where I can do the one grind, move over to the next machine, do the next grind, blah, blah, and step it up. Yeah, so that saves you a lot of time. But I realize not all the guys want to invest in this. I am a full-time maker, right? And I no longer do production work. So now I'm sitting with an entire grind room, dedicated built grind room with nine grinders in it. And I only use one. It doesn't matter how good I think I am. I can only use one at a time, right? But anyway, so hopefully that answers the question. I'm an activist of standalone. What next purchase you need to make, you need to go and have a look at what you are doing, how you're doing, and actually think about the process. Don't just go and buy because the Joneses has bought it, yeah? Because a lot of the tools that you will buy as a new maker will just fucking sit in your cupboard and you've pissed away money, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and just keep in mind, a surface grinder, what did the guys use uh, before surface grinders? And that other little tool, also referred to as a disc sander, can I use that more often? Yes, you can. Okay, so uh, Matt is asking me how much more builds or how much many, how many more episodes will this build have? If I stop ranting and raving, um, a lot less. How many? Look, I don't know. We've now been busy for 41 minutes and I've done nothing. So let me get back to work. Robert wants to know how much you want for your... How much <laughs> I want for my what? Surface grinder. For my surface grinder. <laughs> how much you want for it? Uh, can I give you a price in, in Zim dollars? <laughs> no, it's not for sale, man. Um, no, it's not for sale. Like I said, it is the, low, the least used piece of kit in my shop. But... Um, I got used to it, yeah, and that is a big problem. I got used to the ease of it. Uh, who else is saying what? Uh, it's just from Wolf. Ha ha ha! Yes, I have a, a surface plate. Yeah. Being lazy, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, lazy. This has got nothing. Oh, man. Being cleverness. No, there's a difference between clever and lazy, um, and and sometimes laziness stems from cleverness. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad is saying, once again, he had a, well, a philosophy. He'd much rather sit and ponder a problem for two days and actually work just an hour than working for two days and then realizing this should have actually just taken an hour. Understand where I'm going with this. So that laziness, as perceived laziness, me sitting on my ass thinking about a solution for two days and then coming across something, as opposed to another bloke working for two days where the outcome is the same, an hour worth of actual work. Yeah. Now, if I'm in a production environment, two days per knife saved and cut down to an hour, that's fucking millions saved of rands, well, dollars during a year. Yeah. So that's why this thing here is the tool. These here is the hand-eye coordination, yeah? But nothing replaces this thing. Okay, so, can you all philosophical, off and off a little, let me, oh, by the way, if you smoke, you need lit. to suck it for it to stay lit, yeah? That, that's a pro tip right it's there. On already. Okay, so, what am I doing? I am now, I've got the width. Let's get back to the drawing. Uh, want that one there. Yeah, no, we want that one there. No, we want that one there. Yeah, that's it. So we've got that little groove cut. We've got that groove cut. We've got that distance on both sides. I now need to go and, and what? Cut the finial length. The finial is the little acorn, yeah? So we're now going to cut the finial length on both sides, and then I can start shaping so am I going to be using the dodgy square for that? Got to know. Robert Reckon's dad is a, was a clever man. He was a bloody clever man. <laughs> he was a clever man. 
All right, so that final length from the outside of the curve to the rough there is 11 millimeters. Yeah, so from there, oh, come on, make a mark. It's time I sharpen my. My scribing vernier again. Okay, so we've got two marks. Uh, don't put stuff on top of a blade for the five millionth time. I keep on crapping myself after this. And then we just take away material. Yeah. So I don't want to cut that too thin at this point. We're in the middle. Of, what am I doing now? I am deciding on how deep the outer finial should be. That, oh, wrong place. How deep that one there should be. Am I just slowly going to cut in? See that jumping, jumping, jumping thing? I hate that. So now I need to just decide... I need to decide, sorry, that was not the intent. I need to decide how deep that little finial is going to be cut in. Yeah, because I need to get to two measurements. Number one, this little straight piece here, or that taper there, I need to get to that diameter and that diameter. So I need to just bring this inner block down <coughs> to those diameters. So in other words, this one here, Bring that edge down to the proper diameter and that edge there. Carry it over and then we can carry on. So that diameter there, I've already checked it and it should be six millimeters, but I want to double check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with six. So we're going to cut the inner one. I'll say six. But we'll do a six and a half because I'll be using a file to get to the final size, okay? Stick that in there. That's very close, actually. That is very, very, very close to where I actually want to get. Okay, so I'm going to stop that and see what that diameter is because I actually like the look of that. So I just want to see how far I'm off here. So that's a seven. I think I might just stay at a seven. Let's just stay at a seven for now. And then we're going to go out to the outer one here. But let me, let me, let me, let me get that size there. Uh, I just want to level it off. And get to a 1.3. So that's a 1.3. I can then go and do the same on this side. Okay. Let 
cigarettes a day? Uh, I smoke a packet of cigarettes a day. But I do want to cut down a bit. But I was in the process before this whole stupid lockdown started. I was smoking my pipe for about half the day. So I managed to get to like four or five cigarettes a day. And during this lockdown, I ran out of pipe tobacco. Yeah, so uh, I'm back in the cigarettes, man. And I can feel it. I, I can really, really feel it. So I should actually be uh, smoking less. I should. So each time you guys see me like wanting to light up a cigarette, just comment. Tell me not to. Yeah, it's as easy as that. Don't tell me not to smoke, and don't don't try to um, tell me the health reasons why you should not smoke. Yeah, I've been smoking for thirty four fucking years, man. I think I've got it. Uh... We are now on the outer diameter, and both of them is the correct dimension. Now I want to go onto the inner one, and we're going to bring that down up to a five mil, I think. So the outer is a seven, so let's just do go onto a six. Yeah, I just want a slight taper there. Just a slight, slight, slight little taper. Which is a 2.4. 2.4. I'm just going to cut that through the tad deeper so I can see the difference here. 
there we go. So hit that height there. Now it's just a matter of uh, kind of lifting this up. Okay, so that we've got. I just want to get my uh, oats laid down. Oh, it's on the file rack. Right, so this is an actual lay file. That's what those do. Yeah, freaking perfect little finish. Choop, done. Okay, so if you've got the real files, I need to uh, invest in a set of needle lay files, but I don't know if they actually exist. All right, so we're going to change the cutter again because I now on the bottom of the acorns, the base of the acorn, there is a little flat transition. Yeah. So let's do that. So on the bottom of the acorn, there's another little flat transition right there. You see that? Yeah. Okay. okay, so that little flat transition step there. So we're now going to take care of that, and then the rest will be just files, I think. No, it will not. So let me let me just swap this off. Uh, there we go. How long have we been up there on this? 57 minutes. And 40 seconds. And 40 seconds. What's Martin saying there? Oh, no, 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 just bring up the comments, please. I no, don't need you to read. Okay. So Sean will get the idea that uh, live actually goes and stays there forever. So if he doesn't show the comments um, and I answer a question um, a week from now, I will just look stupid. But that's the idea, isn't it? What, make the boss look stupid? No. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's cut that little groove, shall we? So about a three quarters of the tool width. And I'm just cutting it by eye, this right about the same height as that inner taper, yeah? Go over to the other side, three quarters of the tool width. Ooh. Oh, I hate it when that happens, man. So all I'm doing is I'm supporting the bronze with my palm, as you can see there, supporting the bronze with my palm in the cut. Alright, so now from that little flat, I need to decide how big that is. So the cup of the acorn. So I'm just going to put four more from up here now. Four more might be a bit big. Yeah. 
already know the depth of the cup. Do it. So from here, I think it'll be pretty much files, man. Let me just get rid of my uh, little engagement ring here. Done. All right. So now we're back onto that knife edge file. Taking my color block out of the way. And now what I want to do is I want to start breaking this corner here. So I'm actually going to go onto a more aggressive file. Breaking that corner at a, I don't know, whatever angle. I just want to get rid of most of that material that is sitting there. So I'm going to have to fight with a needle file. Okay, so now we can get it in with a needle file. Most of that material is out of the way. And actually start shaking that little cup. Yeah. That's how it's done. Now all we want to do is we just want to get that curvature the same on both sides. Like I mentioned earlier, it's easier to do the one side, but when you get to the other side you make it match where you then start being flat. Back onto that aggressive file just to break that manual. Ah, don't let it slip. And don't put your tools on top of the lathe, damn it. Don't let me catch you do that again. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this side, the funnel is longer than on this side. Yeah, so I need to cut that down. And bring it in a bit more. Once again, we're just doing a rough cut here. That is better.
So now I'm literally just eyeballing the two. We're not going to go too thin. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, so now we go and evaluate where I'm at. Please be here. Because I can leave everything as is and it'll really closely match what we have. But it is not the exact measurements as we have on the drawing. For instance, that section there is seven millimeters where on my drawing it's supposed to be five the outer is uh, eight mil where on my drawing it's supposed to be a six so i can actually bring that down but what i want to do is i want to maybe just cut those little rounds in a tad more or maybe i should finish the acorns first let's finish the acorns which is going to be adding the most pressure down on this thing so let's finish those first and then we can uh, look into the rest Once again, I'm focusing on the single side. Okay, can I the fault? So something just fell off my lathe and I'm I believe it might be my vernier, which I had on the lay. Damn it. So are we there yet? Are we freaking there yet? So putting my hand underneath it. It's a lot easier to judge where we're at. Okay, so now, with that flat, I want to cut that finial base a bit thinner, that little step. Looks like that's it. And we'll clean up that face again. Clean each other. Oh, this one is not shorter.
Nice. And we're finally freaking making progress. Yep. Yeah. So the next step, what I want to do is once again, cut that little groove a bit deeper. Now, one thing, if there's one lesson you take away from this, yeah, never cut to the final depth first. Because as soon as you add side pressure, that's going to break right there. Ask me how I know this. And make sure that have been in my shop and actually had a look at my little failure draw, specifically on daggers, specifically on these little stilettos. There's an entire range. I'm talking about half drawn like this, and you saw how that took it out of my hand. Half made finials or uh, guards or quillins like this. There's probably 15 of them. Yeah. So now we're going to cut. I'm going to focus on the right hand side first. Uh, can you guys see? This is the big thing. I need to see and you need to see. Yeah. So what I want to do now, I'm going to kind of go into a depth here. That looks cool. That resembles my drawing. I like that. That and that I like. Yes, I do like those two depths. So now it's a matter of uh, number one, getting that internal, getting that diameter out of that one, which is a four and a half millimeter, and tying that over. Four mil. Okay, so our drawing says four. We're currently on a four and a half. So we are now going to be working the other side. That one there. To that same deck. eyeballing it before I go over to a burnout. There we go. I'm set up for a second one. The outer. Which is a lot of now. And that one there, we're at three and a half. <laughs> Now this is where you get coffee and then screw up. Right, so now I want to put that size there, lock it up. And that one now needs to go down ever so slightly. There we go. And I think we'll do the same measurement on here. Same process, lock that up, and then see, oh, that one is cool. Right, so our little grooves are now cut to the same depth, two inners and the two outers. The acorns are round about in the light that I have. It looks fairly cool. All right. Uh, little finials at the ends, those little balls at the end, we're actually going to leave those. We're going to file that in by hand. Because uh, as soon as I start cutting in here now, it's going to add pressure and it will break on those. Yeah, And filing those things in by hand is going to be really super quick. But I do want to just clean up a section for me if I need to relay that, re re chuck it up. I actually have a section that I can do that in. And I should really be sharpening this cutter now.
because I honestly can't remember whether we're actually going to be doing some indexing on this. Yeah, that's good. Right, so I'm going to change the cutter one last time because on my drawing, let's do that. So on my drawing, me drawings, what I do have is that little two mole transition there, but you'll see that little line there. View from the side is that there. So that little transition, that two mole sits there, that there. You can now go and file in if you want to, but seeing that we're on a lathe, when we're turning stuff, we might as well uh, we'll cut it in there. So traditionally, I would have cut that in straight, but I like with on the lathe uh, with all the roundnesses happening on uh, these little stilettos. Um, I actually don't mind cutting that in that little quill and block transition or corner. I really don't mind cutting it in. And like five minutes on the well, not even five minutes, two minutes on the lathe will save you about an hour. Uh, so. Doing it by hand will take you about an hour. Well, not really an hour. By doing it on the lathe, it'll take you freaking minutes. So decide how far I want to come in. Oh, see. I should have done that first. Actually, see how blunt that cut is by that uh, burrs. Okay, so I just want to cut those so that they are in the same width of region. Because I can manipulate that with files, which is the preferred method. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on to the files then. Get this baby out of the way completely. Does anyone have any questions so far? There's a little, I see someone has written a little short story there. Who's this pot? You guys see this, yeah? Dude, you're a fucking idiot. It's as easy as that, yeah? Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Okay, so now that I've lost my shit, you go back in. Now you can 
can see I'm using a file to uh, just clean that up. Running the same, all are the same. Boy, don't think no, my dad used to say. Looking at the width of my file, using that as a guide, just under and just under. Yeah. That's good. So would you mind getting the uh, 400, 600 bucks extra? And then what I'm going to do is take a little black file, and I'm just going to work this area on this side, work the top. Just to get rid of the deeper flat, deeper file marks. We will be hand sanding this and we will end up uh, blasting it, sand blasting it. But surface preparation is 90% of this game. Okay? Don't let me talk to you about using texturing to a high chip. Yeah, I think I touched on that yesterday. Well, on the last video, not yesterday. Excellent. Thanks, brother. Now you can go in with your Fordham, with your uh, flexi shaft, with your whatever, and clean these things up really quickly. Yeah. But not everyone has them, so uh, we use plastic. If you're new to this, plastic is a stick with sandpaper wrapped around it. This one here is a 400. And I think I should actually, in the next little video, just cover how to make these. They are fairly stupid on how to make them. It really is not rocket science. But then also I've seen guys making them. It's really man. So there are a couple of basic principles that we need to cover on this. Okay? So I will do that. It really isn't rocket science, man. It is a stick with sandpaper wrapped around it, done in such a way that the edges are scored, so if I want to cut it off or break it up, then I don't end up with touring, tearing out like this, yeah, where the score on this wasn't deep enough. And then you end up with this. As opposed to this one here. So you can see the scoring has been done deep enough, yeah, so you can actually tear it away. So the 400 is probably where you're going to be spending most of your time on this. Getting rid of the machine marks. Machine marks. File marks. So if I've got a specific finish in mind, I might only do a 400 or even go up to a thousand grit on this. On this one, I'm going to be a blasting, so uh, I find that a 400 is cool. But I do like a 600, man. I do like a 600 finish. So uh, I will be going to a 600, not just stick at a 400. Yeah.
just because no one will see it doesn't mean that you're not going to it's not worth doing it. Sorry, Sean, you were saying? Oh, thanks, man. Sean is playing uh, the wall and safe for health and safety, making sure that I don't stick my elbow in the machine. Thanks, brother. That's appreciated. Because I normally wouldn't be working with a jacket on, but it's funking cold, man. Well, Sean is stripping down. Okay, so let's have a look at this. I do want to just rubby rub it. Yeah, that's fairly cool. I'm liking that. Symmetry on those acorns. That's fairly cool. I can actually dump this one down a tad more, but that might be a uh, just an optical illusion. That's 400. So now we're going to go on to a 600 buff stick. So a lot of times what I find is that as you're sanding, um, for instance on bronze, the 400 grit leaves are really nasty for them. But as soon as you wipe it with your hand, it looks a lot better. But I won't judge on symmetry until we get to a 600. And then ask me why. I just find that uh, gauging stuff on a 600 is easier than on a 400. Now, that torn away piece, and I'm going to fold that, and this is the 600. Fold that in half, and now just with my hand pressure, so not a mechanical backing, so I'm just letting the sandpaper now fall on this. And also, I see that there's a lot of guys going on about what's the best sandpaper to use, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yes, there are some real brands. Yeah? But in working on bronze, it doesn't matter. You can use freaking wood sandpaper. It really honestly doesn't matter. Yeah, but this is wet and dry. It is literally the cheapest thing I could buy in Solo. Just to show you that this here, the sandpaper part of things, doesn't really make a difference. If you now are doing a mirror polish on a blade, how yes, your selection of sandpaper will keep you either smiling or crying. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Anthony. How's it going, Alex? See, that guy knows that in Africa, bribery, bribery is a thing. Yeah? And if you can't bribe, then you just blatantly comment or compliment. Yeah? Calling me handsome. Oh, man. That's appreciated, dude. And then, of course, we all know. Look at me. Yeah? I'm also known as the handsome bladesman. Yeah, no. No. Not at all. I do have a face for radio, man. Okay, so going into those little cuts with a 600 is kind of the key to the point. Because that's a file finish at the bottom, eh? But I've got the 400 in my hand and I'm lazy, so let me just drop the, four, uh, the 600 in my hand and go to a 400. Then I know that I'm going to be cleaning off those those uh, little cuts with Crytek's wheels, so I really honestly don't need to be cleaning this off. No, no, this is a 600, is it? No, this is a piece of 400 that I've got there. But thanks for double checking the short. So I, I really honestly do not need to be cleaning this up. I really honestly don't. But I'm just going to spend like a half hour a second doing that. And that. Okay. So that is it. Now I can evaluate and see. Oh, I like that. That is fairly cool. So there's obviously we want to get you a bit of hand sanding at the back well, I of this. 
I've got anxiety watching you leaning over a spinning blade in a fluffy jump. It's tight fitting, brother. It is tight fitting. Yeah. So this chuck, there is no protruding part on it. So it, even if I lean up against it, it's going to melt my little synthetic thing, but it's not going to grab on anything. Yeah. My sleeves, on the other hand, is a real thing. Yeah. So that can be caught up in the chuck as I'm working there. But uh, staying away from the thing in general is just a matter of focus and your your mind. And if you're paying attention, you will have seen me uh, getting whacked by this thing at least three times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think it's, I, think, I actually think it was four times. But anyway, so that there is fairly cool. So now we can go and double check ourselves. And, the, and this is where doing this live can really come back and bite me in the ass. Let's just measure that there and then compare it to the other side. Oh, that's freaking cool. Okay, so everything else I can work with. So as long as from that line there to my the side of my quillen block, from that line there to the side of my quillen block, everything is perfect. The rest I know I'm going to have to handle with hand files, and I can use that base measurement from there to the tip to actually go and put that in. Yeah. So on this side... We're very close, man. We're very, very, very close. You can actually see that the left finial, this one, might be a tad longer than the right. But you can see also, I'm, I'm now not, not able to get in with my vernier and actually use the proper side. So I can also use that measurement over there. So from the outside of the quillen block to there, lock it up. Same thing on there. And you can see how the left finial is longer than the right one. Yeah. So what I want to do is... Uh, what, what I do don't you know if I must put that comment on. <laughs> yeah, put it on, man. What the hell? <laughs> I don't mind. Sean is not just safe to officer. He's also now trying to, uh, to be the moral officer. The yeah, yeah, it's more important for me to see at this point, and then I can explain what I'm doing. There you go. So what I've done, as you can now clearly see, taking that outside Benjamin made a mark. Taking that outside Benjamin had made a mark. On the right hand one, you can see my vernier scraping. So I need to take a bit of material away there, so I can actually do that marking. Yeah. Ah, you can see how it's jumping, trying to do that hard cut. That is something that will come back and bite you in the ass, so don't do that. You want to see a grown man cry? And I want to get down to my finial size. That's a little ball at the end of these. Just so that I actually have a base to start working from. Also cutting a bit back a bit on that, and I want to go to a one eight. I'm just picking a arbitrary depth here, so that I can cut the left and the right to the same depth. Okay, so we might be going to a two because I jabbed it in there. Not 
Right, and because I screwed up on that side, we need to go back onto this side and do it slowly. Happiness is balls on the ends of your quillet. Okay, so now we can do another measurement. Just make sure that the sizes I have is the sizes that I want. Okay, now you can see that that ball is too large. It's too fat. So we start cutting away the material. prices on stuff while I'm still working it. Uh, but the last three that I did, which is pretty much following the same, uh, they will be going for about a thousand two hundred dollars US. It's not art. This is a craft, right? I'm a craftsman. I'm a craftsman. Bladesmithing is a craft. Um, making knives is a craft. It's not an art. Art is fucking painting and pottery. Yeah. Uh, performing arts. Um, uh, singing. Uh, acting. Blah, 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 blah. What we are is craftsmen. The fact that some people perceive what we make as beautiful and therefore in the eye of the beholder is seen as art, by all means, and thank you. But I do not call myself an artist. I am a craftsman. Although I studied art. Yeah, doesn't make me an artist. I am a craftsman. and uh, But brother, I'll take the compliment. Thank you. It's appreciated. <laughs> All right, so that baby is cut down. I don't want to go too much balls to the wall on this. I just want to make it sure that my measurements are still on cue here. That there. And that there. So that there. And that there. I'm now over the mark by the same amount. So I can take my little eraser. Take that old marker, yeah, and now I can go and cut and undercut for my finial. Right there. Triangular file. Search, 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 search. I don't have one in here. Where the hell is my triangle file? Oh, there we go.
So we take this thing out of my mouth, the other file. So all I'm doing is I'm using my triangle file to shape a little finial right at the end. Sean. Let me let me get this. <laughs> so, brother, what I have used in the past, right? See, you know, when you when you meet someone new, um, and uh, that person goes, "Man, I know you from somewhere." I, I know you from so my standard answers. So you watch porn, right? <laughs> <laughs> always, always a good response. Yeah, <laughs> that works brilliantly if it's a lady. Yeah. Okay, so I am now just working little finials at the end. I don't want to get them perfect, yeah, because there's a lot of hand work that's going to go. So this Barrett file has the best edge of it. My camera has gone off. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I've got a semi-decent round. They're not the same width. But that doesn't matter because I'm going to be fighting them. They are the same diameter, though. Yeah? That's good. That's all I'm wondering. I think, ladies and gentlemen, aside from me quickly going on there with a 400... Sean, will you mind just getting me a sheet of 400 sandpaper? No, 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 no. I'm just going to tear this up. Don't worry, I'll wrap it again. <laughs> I know, I'll do a video on, on how to wrap the uh, plastics. Yeah, so I've got a piece of 400, which I just want to do. Get rid of those file marks on there, or the machine marks. This is the file marks. Yes. So the acorn is on the pommel at the back and then on the ends of the guard, also referred to as a quillen. But on the quillen, the end piece, the acorn, is also referred to as a finial. Yeah. So if you think your curtains in the home, you get these little finials that you can buy, you can stick to the end of the rod and then hang your curtains in your bedroom on there. So that finial comes from this. The word finial stems from daggers and uh, uh, swords. As a decorative end piece on the quillen or cross guard. That's why these are referred to as quillen daggers or kion dagger. Kion is actually the proper French pronunciation. I believe it is French. Kion dagger or a quillen dagger. It's not a main gouge, it's a mongosh. So a lot of these terms is Italian and 
French and German as where they that, that's kind of where, where they got used, yeah. So our modern day English in 90% uh, of the time is just really bastardizing or butchering the actual terms, man. And you see guys arguing about the pronunciation. That is just stupid. Go to a Frenchman and ask him. And what I did have was uh, Mr. Alex Steele sent me the correct pronunciation for uh, main gauche which is mongos i think i'm still managing to screw that up yeah <laughs> now that is a guy that's got his head screwed up correctly all right well gentlemen that was it yeah that is pretty much it man we're going to take this thing off the lathe i feel confident that i did not screw up too badly i uh kind of like the ratios i've got there well, I don't have a choice because that what, what we, that is what we do, and I can't just willy nilly change my mind like I normally do on a project. Yeah, if I don't, don't really don't like something, I can just kind of nudge it this way or nudge it this way. It worked brilliantly on paper, and I can do this and I can do that. Yeah. Um, so, are we going to take this off? Are we? Yeah, that's it. This is it. So, any other questions that we've had so far? I can actually switch so that light off. Stiletto is a small and intricate little dagger that is traditionally carried on the person. Um, and it is purely there for stabbing people. That was it. It main function is to kill. Done. Um, and make it as lethal as possible. Triangular blade, um, which in the 15th, 16th, 17th century was not impossible to cure, but very difficult. Yeah. So if you uh, that was it. Small little dagger that was carried on the person. Um, I read an article about uh, uh, dress and sashes in the, the uh, 15th century, 16th century in court in England and in, well, in Europe. Um, and these daggers were hidden underneath those. Um, so that would be taken out, just stab the guy that you really had an issue with and put it back and there you go, pretend to not have done anything. And I don't know, yeah. But small stiletto daggers, they had no other function aside from uh, stabbing, stabbing people. Done. That was it. Next one. Excellent, man. Go have a fun, Sean. Really appreciate it, man. Next one, Sean. Sean, Sean. Uh, Max is saying, I believe art is the ability to display thoughts and emotions. emotions into a material objects. Uh, the function of art is purely to be, be beautiful. As soon as a piece of art has an actual function, like for instance, a knife to stab, it can theoretically not be referred to as art any longer. That is the base definition of art. Purely to inspire, uh, as soon as it has a function, it becomes a tool, yeah? But that, I'm full of crap and we know this, yeah? So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. Go and bladder, 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 bladder. Yeah? <laughs> Until the next time, I'm going to take this off the lathe and uh, I will just cut the mother stock off. So, in other words, this piece of bronze that is still on the lathe, I will cut that off um, and uh, then post a couple of photos on Instagram and on Facebook and the whole thing to say this is where we're at. Um, then I will decide what the next one is going to be, the next section, and depending on when I have time, we will get into that. Yeah? So, it'll probably, 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 probably happen tomorrow uh, or even later on this afternoon or this evening. I don't know yet. Uh, but the next step for me on this would be to start turning the, uh, the dagger blade before I go into the grind room. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for tuning in. If you've got any questions, uh, if you made a comment and I didn't get to it, I will watch the entirety of the one hour and 52 minutes. So with me rambling, probably end up at two hours. Um, and if you've had any comments that I didn't address during the live, I will be commenting on them. Okay. Um, my email address is well published. Niels, N-E-E-L-S, at blackdragonforge.com. 
If you've got a personal, you need to reach out, uh, pop me a query right there. Yeah? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of here. Let me kill this thing. Have fun. Enjoy. And thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate that.